All right, in this video, we're going to take this photo of Kobe Bryant, and we are going to turn it into this. If you guys are new to this channel, welcome. I do a sports design every single Monday. I taught myself how to design, and now I want to teach you how to design. And with that being said, let's get into the first part of this video. So with this video, it's going to be a little bit longer, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the timestamps in the description of specific things within the video, but I'm going to really break down each individual part so you guys have a better understanding of the design process in general. So the first thing I did was, of course, I cut out my image by masking and then I took it into Camera Raw Filter. So once I was in Camera Raw Filter, the two things I always adjust in every single video is my texture and my clarity. So texture and clarity just make your image a little bit more clear. Sometimes your image is blurry for whatever reason and texture and clarity always make it look a little bit better. But I also always work with really high definition photos so that plays a really big part in the design. The next thing I do is I adjust the highlights as well as the blacks and whites. But what I do is I just test them left and right just to see how it affects my photo. So there's no really rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, but sometimes I do put highlights and shadows as inverse. So if I increase the highlights, I decrease the shadows. It all depends on the picture and the lighting within the picture. But for this particular graphic, I decided to make the adjustments that you see on the screen. Also what Vibrance does is it just adds to the reds within the, the photo. So you can see how I made the skin a little bit more red. You can see the before and then the after here. All right, the second thing I did was add a high pass filter. So what a high pass filter does is it adds a little bit of grain to your image, but what that grain does is it just makes some parts of the skin in the jersey pop out a little bit. So if you increase the slider to the right, what that does is it Whenever you put it on soft light, it makes the bigger parts of your image jump out more. So you can say the like the muscles on Kobe jump out more when you have that the soft light and you have it the slider turned to the right a little bit. But if you put it on 0.9 or 1 pixels, it's going to make the smaller details pop out a little bit more. So I sometimes put two high pass filters. It really depends on what the graphic is and what my original photo is. All right, the next thing I did was a levels adjustment. So you can do a levels adjustment by going to your new adjustment layer, which is on the bottom hand corner where you can delete things, where you can uh, make things into a folder. You can add an adjustment layer called levels. And what you can do is you can paint on your shadows. So I did this on a multiply layer and as well as a screen layer for Kobe. So if you look at your image, your image is going to have spots on it that are darker than the rest. So you can see I'm doing the jawline as well as the armpits and anywhere that has a dark spot. You can see it a lot. A lot of times with the jerseys, they're going to have dark spots. And another way you can do is you can double click on your image and then you can hit alt on your keyboard and you can slide the slider one way or the other. So you can see where the light parts of your image is and you can see where the dark parts of your images are. So what that does is it allows you to paint on those darker spots that you may not recognize by just looking at your image. So that's a cool trick that I learned uh, recently from a buddy of mine, but it is something that I'm going to be using from now on because I always paint on my levels on multiply and always paint on my highlights on screen but that's what I do in particular I know other graphic designers do different methods but that's what I choose to do I want to take this time while I am painting on the shadows to say if you guys aren't already subscribed please do so it's free it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps out my channel and please if you like these types of videos where I break down each part of my design leave a like so I know to keep doing them Alright, back to the design process. So after you've painted on your shadows, 
Next thing you do is add different adjustment layers to make the shadows look better. So if you look at the top right corner here, you can see that Kobe's skin is almost like a purplish color and that the shadows are a lot more enhanced. And so what you can do is add a black and white adjustment layer on top and you're going to want to switch it to soft light. And what that does is make your shadows a little bit darker without having to modify them in the multiply adjustment layer that you already created. All right, the next thing I did was see if a color lookup would make the graphics colors look a little bit better. So what I did is I put a color lookup on there and then I adjusted the opacity to it. The next thing I did was see if selective color could be adjusted at all. So I moved the sliders right to left under selective color and I realized that the skin was a little bit too red so of course I took the reds out by adding a little bit more cyan. And then I adjusted the black and white slider under the reds of selective color. That just makes the reds in the photo a little bit darker. I also added a film stock color lookup. So film stock, in my opinion, makes the highlights look a lot better on sports images. So you can see like the light of the arena better on the player. Uh, you can see what I mean here. So I put film stock on and then I just lower the opacity a little bit and it just brings out the lighter colors on my graphic. This next technique is one of my favorites. So what you do is you create a blank layer and you want to clip it to your player and you're going to want to paint over with a white paintbrush and then you double click on your layer that you just created and then you're going to slide the bottom slider to the right and what that does is it essentially makes the whites pop out and just the really bright parts of your image so you can see on the left shoulder here you have a little bit of white popping out as well as on top of the head and then what you're going to do is create a clipping mask with that and hit command I to invert it. And then you just paint back on those whites. So what you're doing is you're putting on highlights and you're just emphasizing the light on the image. A really, really cool and unique way of putting highlights onto a player. So you also can do this with your shadows, but I already used a multiply levels adjustment. Some people use both, but for this one I just used one levels adjustment. So you can do the same thing, but instead of sliding that underlying layer to the right, you would take the black slider and you would slide it to the left to reveal the darker parts. And then you do the same thing, uh, create a clipping mask and hit command I and invert it and then paint back on your shadows. All right, so the font I was going to go with was the font you see on the screen right now, which is the Gunslinger Water Drop. And I put it on, I didn't like it, so I went with the font handwriting. Um, I can link the handwriting font download in the description so that you guys can use it. But you can also see the different adjustments that I made on the font. So what I did is I added a drop shadow, I added a outer glow to it so that you could see it on Kobe's body a little bit better. I also didn't like that it was all caps so I made sure that just the K was caps and that the O, B, and E were all lowercase. Alright this might be the most fun part of this graphic was the splatter effect and it's definitely something that you guys can incorporate into your graphics. So the splatter effect is actually a orange as you can see and what I did is I just hid the orange in the background just so that you guys could see the the splatter on the outside and I wanted to make sure it looked like the jersey was part of the splatter so you can see later on what I do to make sure that happens but yes the the background is this literally an orange with the juice flying out the back and what I did is I just copied and pasted it and I just placed it all around the image so it looked like there was like a splatter effect in the background. And then I adjusted the hue and saturation 
on a couple of them so that the purple parts of the jersey were had that splatter effect that I just talked about. I also added a black mamba, but I made it purple and I wanted it to look like it was coming through the E. So I just raster sized the E and I deleted parts of the letter. So it looked like the black mamba, which is a purple mamba is coming through the letter E. All right, next is the background design. So you can see that I put Kobe's logo in the background and then I put two pictures of Kobe popping through the top. Pretty simple, all you have to do is create a clipping mask with those two images and then clip it to Kobe's logo. I also added a little bit of lighting around the outside with a white brush just going around the outside on low opacity. I also tried out different textures in the background and I ultimately ended up going with the texture you see right here. So I put this texture on and then I changed the blend mode to hard light and then I changed the hue and saturation so that it remained purple in the background but the texture was a yellow color like the yellow on Kobe's jersey. I also wanted to add another Kobe to the bottom portion of the logo. So I did the same thing, created a clipping mask. I changed the hue and saturation to purple and I just clipped it to Kobe. I also wanted to experiment with different overlays. So I wanted to put a ring or something going down the side, but I didn't end up going with that in the end because it just didn't look as good as I thought it was going to look. But I did go with a couple of these paint splatters around the outside as well as a couple extra paint splatters as a background for the Kobe. As you can see there is a part of the Kobe PNG that cuts off around his knee and it creates like a straight line effect. So I wanted to get rid of that. So I have a, a couple of different brushes that I wanted to try just as overlays so that you can't see that line where it, it cuts off and I ended up going with a PNG splatter effect that I used before so I used that same orange and I put it over top this next part is one of my favorite parts it's overlays lighting and color lookups so the first thing I did was add vibrance so what vibrance does is it just makes your colors pop out a little bit more in my opinion and you can adjust the opacity as well as the fill however you feel if the effect is too strong you can lower the opacity and if you want more obviously you can increase the opacity the next thing is color lookups so you can see me just scrolling through each one of the color lookups and seeing which one that I want to use after I find whatever one I use I lower the opacity a little bit just so I can decrease the effect you can see the before and then the after I also added a hue and saturation layer and I increased the saturation a little bit to make my image a little bit more saturated and then I adjusted the curves layer on top of that and what that does is it increased the brightness of my image and then I added a gradient map so for my gradient map I first put it on black and white and I just wanted to see if any of the blend modes would make it look a little bit better and if I could adjust the opacity to make something pop. Uh, usually I look at the shadows to see if a gradient map can help, but I decided that I wanted to have a purple and gold gradient map so that the shadows were a purplish goldish color. You can see that you can just click on either side of the gradient map and then you can choose whatever color that you want to use. So you can see how that affects the left side of my screen and then you can hit OK and this is the before and then that's the after. I then adjust the opacity because like I said if an effect is too strong if your color correction is too strong you can always lower the opacity so that it looks a little bit better. Another effect that could be potentially useful for you guys is channel mixers. So sometimes I put channel mixers on and then I hit monochrome and then I put it on luminosity and it creates a really cool effect that you guys can try out in your graphics. And then this is my final result. Thank you guys for watching. Again, please subscribe. We do a video every single Monday. And leave me a comment and a like if you guys learned anything. Thank you so much and have a good one.